Awesome. Welcome back to the Booty Bands More Than Fitness podcast. I'm your host, Danita Young, excited to take you through this topic of leveling up and embracing your wins during your fitness journey. Today, I have a guest speaker. This is Amanda Wessel. She actually just is graduating the accountability program, and she's a mom. She's a high school teacher. She's an MC, a stage manager for the local music venue, and a blogger for the City Pulse. So let's welcome in Amanda. Booty Bands and Barbells helps busy women sculpt and tone their bodies in just 15 minutes a day through our physical products and our one-on-one -on -one coaching. All right, Mandy's over here just uh, rattling off all of her wins, and I want to just share with you guys <laughs> her wins. And I'm I'm holding back my wins for her, but I'm letting her go first. Aww. So go ahead. Aww. that's it. Yeah. So the the mindset and the like the self worth part of it has been the biggest thing. And I've learned so much about myself, you know, through this. And I'm completely different from when I started as far as, you know, feeling that I'm enough. It, you know, it just so, I mean, serendipitously coincided with a breakup, uh, you know, very shortly after I started the program, uh, about a month after maybe, yeah, about a month after I started the program, um, you know, having a relationship and kind of to me, it seemed kind of out of the blue and it was a over three and a half year relationship. And I was on the phone crying with <laughs> Janita and being emotional. And that's not normally how I am, you know, just was able to, yeah. I mean, I don't even, I don't know what I would have done, you know, if it, if it weren't for her, like coaching me through that and, you know, doing the important work on myself. And then as I've gotten back out there, I'm now just attracting something completely different, wanting something completely different. I've been dating a guy for a few weeks that lo looks pretty promising, you know, um, but completely different type of person um, than I would have gone for before. And so I had this one moment that to me is, was the biggest, it seems so small, but I, I went, we went to an outdoor concert last Sunday. And as I was leaving my house, I, it was really hot, you know, so I put on shorts and I'm not a big fan of like wearing shorts because I'm very self-conscious. So I put on my little outfit with my little shorts and I go out to leave. I'm getting into my car and then the sun's beating really hard and it's showing like, I've got cellulite, right? As, as much as I've progressed, I, I'm like, oh, there's cellulite on my legs, you know? So I started to go, I got my key out again, go back to the front door and I was going to literally go into my house even though it was like 90 degrees I was going to go back in and put like jeans on because I'm like oh I don't want to and I stopped myself and I was like you know what f it I've got cellulite if this dude doesn't if he's not down with that <laughs> what am I doing would I want to even be with someone who's like ew <laughs> and I stopped myself and I was like I'm and you know what and and luckily it, it didn't seem that bad throughout the day in the other lighting. I think it was just the lighting I was in that, you know, highlighted it. But that to me was huge because instead of, you know, the old me would have just sweated in jeans on a hot day and not enjoyed myself, but the, you know, because um, of my, my view of myself. And this was like huge where I'm like, this is me. I'm a work in progress. It'll probably get better. It's gotten better, but I'm not hiding myself like for a guy. Yeah, so that was huge. So the mindset piece has been huge. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, um, love that. I, actually then, tried, I actually was tearing up on this, you guys. Um, the journey of, wow, the journey that we've had together, man, it's just been like, it's just been so mm -hmm. phenomenal. It really has. It's been it's been beautiful. And wow, that shock of that relationship situation. But, um, you know, I, yeah. I'm glad that Daisy's on here today too, because we were just talking about this, that when she started to actually get into her higher self, how her separation of her relationship happened too. And, and uh, that when you start to become stronger, this level up makes it so either mm -hmm. the person that you're with either decides in that moment, I'm going to level up with you or I'm out in whatever way that is. Right. Mm -hmm. So right. It's, um, you know, it's, it's, it's beautiful to see you step in your own. And I have to now share 
um, I have to share my screen because I'm just like totally just flabbergasted by your progress that just came in. So I know. And when I look at it, I'm like, ew, <laughs> before. <laughs> All right. I can't hold back anymore, you guys. Okay. This is what five inches lost in your waist looks like, by the way. Yeah. Look yeah. at the way that her pants fit differently on her. Like, look yeah. how good, like every part of your body, like you can see your legs, how more tight and toned and yeah. sculpted you look. All right. So I've got another pic. Look at this then the, the back, look at how there's no more of like you're in your back. Hang in, like how sexy your little back is over there. Yeah. I it's crazy. All of this. Okay. Look at this side picture, dude. This is my favorite. Look at that butt going on right now. I know. And still, you know, I've got a little ways to go, but when you see it and I'm still really critical, you know, like, I'm like, Oh, I don't know. I need to do more. But then when I saw side by side, I'm like, Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Crazy, crazy. So. so going through that type of transformation right in the middle of a breakup, is unheard yeah. of. Most people go downhill yeah. during a breakup. And so the fact that you had to like really keep it together and really like, mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of people can fall off, stop taking their coaching calls, like really give up on themselves. But the fact you were like, I'm in this, I'm in this yeah. for a couple, for a couple weeks that were full struggle. And, and that's how life is It's going to throw us those curveballs. Right. But how cool it was that you just didn't, you didn't give up on yourself at all through that process was very inspiring. Well, thank you. And yeah, thanks. Thanks to you. <laughs> it but, was hard. I mean, yeah, there were, there were a couple of weeks that were really, really bad where my appetite was totally off. I didn't, I just didn't even have the energy to, you know, think, but yeah, I just, kept coming back to what you what you taught me and and invested in myself and thought you know what and then I got to the point where I'm like you know what screw him like I'm making myself better to you know for the next person who's going to appreciate it and you know I think the other interesting thing too was um very shortly after maybe it was only a week or two after the breakup and Danita had asked me you know if this guy came back around and said, oh, I've made a big mistake. I want you back, blah, blah, blah. What would you, what would you do? And I meant this at the time, this was a couple months ago. And I said, well, if, you know, I, if he did something extreme, like he had a ring and had a plan and all that, like, then maybe I would, right. You know, and, um, but the more I've grown through this, like if that happened today, I would not. I would not go back with that person. I don't care what kind of ring he's got. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I just, the more I reflect on it, it's like the more, you know, un unhealthy it's, you know, and, and I've, I've really been able to examine, you know, those aspects and see it through a completely different lens of someone who is not showing up for me physically, emotionally. And I guess that's another part of it. Like this program teaches you to show up for yourself so strongly that you're just going to weed out people who don't show up for you the way you show up for yourself, which is, it's tough because guess what? There are a lot of people in your life you realize that do not show up for you <laughs> and that sucks. But when you get them out of your life, then you make more room for people who will. And that's the beauty of it for yeah. sure. Yeah. So true. I remember, I relate to that a lot as um, being a formal people pleaser that I was keeping people in my life with just the idea that they were in my life. Right. And just right. filling up my friend's cup and, and it hasn't been until, you know, honestly, really recently of just this work of living your truth and being true to yourself and um you know having having your 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 body is so freaking smart dude it's so intense like that's why breath work is such a phenomenal one as you're going through any emotions and yeah. tells you like straight up what's going on and yeah. I even go to a feeling of just like does this friend do I feel empowered like remember that conversation we had like does this person that you're dating do you feel empowered and like that they're trying to lift you up or does it feel the opposite 
they feel like it's it's like bringing you down they're insecure so they have to bring you down and so it's like literally mm. that it's either one or the other and it's really interesting is to witness that and see wow this is a type of friend or a relationship that just wants to see me grow and, and there might be times and days that obviously it's going to not be a hundred percent, but always kind of checking in and just being like, Hey, like, you know, I got you, you got me. And that's the type of friendship is like, how can you show up for them and, and have that same uplifting empowerment to them too? You know? Yeah. Cool. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. All right. Well, hope your 13, 13 year old boys listening to this call right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> He's like, mom, I'm gossiping, but no, um, it, I, I think he recognizes the changes as well. And I, I know he's proud of me in his own little way. So, and he uses my weights too, which is, <laughs> it's just good. He's, he's not ashamed that they're pink and purple and everything. He's, he's like, oh, okay, I'll use them. Yep. That's awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So let's go into forward momentum. Um, we've been able to really cover wins, but I want to just kind of see where are, we're always in progression. So I want to keep you in that momentum of progression. And I, I love that you do. So a couple of things that got brought up this week, as far as why we wouldn't progress. And I really love that um, coach Daisy made this for us today. So I'm going to read through it. And I want, as I read through them, I want you to think which one really kind of sinks with you that you want to focus on. One is yeah. you actually need to eat more than you think. That's one. Number two is where are you at in your to-do list? Are do you actually have you scheduled into your planner? Like we got everybody else scheduled into our planner, but literally is your name on your planner. Okay. Number three, are you living in your truth or are you living in your loop? The other one is, are you remaining to be high maintenance? What that means is imagine yourself in that hot little red dress, those little high heels, and do you just eat everybody's birthday cake when you're feeling confident like that? Or are you like, nah, I'm going to have my glass of wine and you kind of be a little bit more pickier. I call it the high maintenance part of you. So which ones out of those um, uh, four or five that I just read for um, sync with you the most this week? Probably the high maintenance one is because now with the date, you know, now that I'm being taken on dates again and some of them involve food and drink. <laughs> Um, just wanting to make sure that I'm like still enjoying myself, you know, and then we have 4th of July weekend, obviously coming up, I'm hosting a party on Sunday and I'm trying to make sure that I have like a game plan, but, um, I just want to make sure that I like Sunday, when I went to this concert, I did like, oh, I overindulged a little bit on the drink and I felt it so much the next day. Um, <laughs> and I was like, I don't want to feel like that again. So, um, yeah, I think that's the one that I want to focus on. Hey, all right. That's the one. So what does that look like for you? So now that you know, that's the one, what would be like a, what would be that action plan? Is it a boundary? Is it the, the, a word or phrase you would need help with to kind of say no, or what is it that kind of speaks to you as far as how that will be set for this week? You know, it's always like, you know, in the old like cartoons where they have like the little like angel on one shoulder and the devil on the other shoulder and the devil's like, Ooh, but I really love alcohol. <laughs> you know, I really love drinking. I really love wings. I really love blah, blah, blah. And these things make me so happy. And then the, you know, the little angel's like, Oh, but you, it's going to undo your progress. Blah, blah, blah. So I don't know. Um, you know, I'm, I'm open to suggest, but, but I don't want it to be one extreme or the other. So, you know, maybe telling myself something around the whole, you know, moderation <laughs> aspect, or just a little bit, you know, indulge in a little bit, or be choosy about my, my top things, like we've talked about before, like, figure out what your, what your, top kind of like non-negotiables like these are things I'm never giving up on right um but then the uh, let the other stuff kind of maybe fall away or it's not I guess something along the lines of like how worth it is it like how worth it like it how worth it is this stupid wine cooler that I had <laughs> you know, I didn't think it would mess me up oh my god it was bad it was really bad I, and this poor guy, this poor guy, I started like randomly crying at one point. Don't really remember. 
and he didn't run away and the next day I was like I am so embarrassed like and he's like it's fine <laughs> it's like as long as you had fun I'm like oh my gosh well the fact that he didn't like run away screaming I guess was yeah <laughs> it was not good Actually, I think it's the opposite for guys. They can actually probably feel like the hero, you know, because us independent, strong women oftentimes um, like to control and do everything. And it really right. it demasculates men to feel like they don't have a purpose. And so right. sometimes when they get obliterated, they're like, oh, OK. Right. <laughs> so, so if anything, you probably really enjoyed it. Yeah, no. It, and, and I like I, I left my I left my favorite sunglasses like in his car. And then later I'm like, oh, my God, I can't find them. And he's like, I have them. But he texted me a picture like I have them. And he's like, I promise I'll take good care of them for you. And I was like, that's so cute. Yeah. But um, but yeah, like, is it is it where is this feeling of like, oh, I feel so happy and buzzed, you know, worth what what I'm going to feel like the next day or the progress that I've made because now you know I really want to zero in now that I have this summer off and I can completely immerse myself in like hitting it hard and and you know coming out strong and making more progress um you know just just ways to ways to do that yeah but still not say no all the time or still have you know um a drink here or there but not make it like take over everything <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to share my experience. Um, and Daisy, I want you to actually share yours too, because this is something that all of us have to work on. And so I want you to just kind of any bit that you can kind of take away from the conversation, I want you to allow it to um, help you in this direction as you are in that dating scene again. Um, for me, there's a feeling of uh, going to Nashville in my tiny little itsy bitsy bikini, a uh, little polka dot bikini, and then like being with my friends and like enjoying that moment and also feeling really sexy and hot. Even though I have cellulite, I looked down, I was like, oh, cellulite, fuck it, let's have some fun. Mm -hmm. I'm you know, just enjoying that. You life. did look great. I loved, I love pictures. Yeah. Yeah. So just enjoying myself and just that feeling of that long term gratification, right? Okay. Then we have this weekend where it's like, all right, I'm going to be out barbecuing with the family. I've got all the drinks coming, all the chips, all the Cheetos, all the shit, right? So mm -hmm. then you have these decisions of the feeling of a long-term event coming up, right? Imagining yourself in that bikini coming up at the end of the summer, you're going to get invited to stuff. It's always going to happen. There's going to be some real fun yeah. events with your friends or family that's going to be there, okay? Always. So imagining yourself in that confident you in that event, and then there's these short little events that are happening, you know, going on dates, et cetera. So the toggle is this. I've done a bikini competition that was three months and it was, I couldn't even have a Cheerio different than my freaking meal plan. Like it was so yeah. intense, it was zero sugar, no alcohol. Like it was the most strict. And honestly, I hated my life. It was the most toughest situation. I wouldn't wish that upon anybody. I felt like I even lost myself. I couldn't even live my life fully. I, I couldn't even be a normal person during that time. So that level of extreme to me is something I'll never do again. I'll never do a bikini competition because you just can't live life unless you really want that goal and you want to go down that direction. You want to be extremely strict and not have a cheerio out of place. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. I'm not that type of coach. There are coaches out there who do that. I do think it's more along this balance that you're talking about that I really like, and it's a feeling. So as soon as I'm in this moment this weekend, I'm about ready to have all the Cheetos and the Cheerios and the blah, 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 whatever. <laughs> I don't know why I'm saying Cheerios today. I think it's funny. But um, just in that moment, that is the second it clicks for me of I want to enjoy myself. It's high maintenance. I love what you said. Which one takes more priority? It kind of turns into I do I want this or do I want that? And instead of thinking of an all, right, I kind of a, is this or a that. And also in my mind, I'm worthy, I'm enough, I'm good enough. I don't need to eat my feelings because I can, I can tap into my truth and realize that the stories I've told myself in the past, that's not me. I don't need to like, I, need, I don't need to eat my feelings, right? So then I go, is it this or that? I can feel like I lived my life, but I didn't indulge. And then when I have these long-term trips I can look forward to, oh, that feeling, that feeling of, oh man, I, I worked out, I worked hard on myself. And you know what? Those are the times I really let go. I just throw it all at the door. I freaking had fun. We had two bottles of tequila. And if I wanted all the Cheetos that time, I'm going to do it, dude. I'm yeah. going to have fun because I held out for a like at least 
that all those long-term, short-term events that are kind of fun with the family, but they're not that one thing, but that specific times I'm going to go, it's like that, was that wild, girls gone wild, you know, I'll yeah. go with all wild on that <laughs> time. Not flashing, hopefully, yeah. Denise, but... <laughs> Yeah. Anyways. Okay. So I want to hear what Daisy's side of it is. If there was anything that resonated. Yeah. Um, I loved how you talked about like the moderation and how it made you feel the next day. And so one of the things like I used to struggle with a lot was moderation, especially when it comes to alcohol, um, just because I don't have like that filter. Right. Um, and so one thing that I actually tried while I was in Nashville was, um, you know, I would have a drink and then I would have two waters. Right. And then I would have my alcoholic drink, but then I would have two waters because it's almost like a, like a mind trick where you always want to have like one in your hand at yeah. all times. Right. And so that was my, my spiral is I would always want to have something in my hand, but I'm, it's also hot outside. So I'm like chugging, but yeah. I wasn't getting water in between. So like being able to put that water in between those really helped the longevity. And I did not feel gross the next day at all and so that was just like yeah. one little tip that I was like oh okay this could probably help her because it totally saved me in Nashville <laughs> yeah yeah no I, I like that and then it's funny today I was also reading about um and then there was a segment on the news I don't know it's this whole big thing is these the new spritz trend like spritz drinks like the Aperol spritzes and so you know where it's like mostly sparkling water and a little bit of wine and a little bit of like an you know maybe mint or something like that so I think I might go that route as well you know maybe even that and then do the you know the waters in between and you know and I mean I also like uh, a couple I went out a couple nights um, before that last week and I was completely sober and I still had fun. You know, I had like club soda and lime. That's, that's all I had. And I still felt like I had a drink. People thought it is funny though, because there, <laughs> I went to see my friend's band and there were all these like 22 year olds, by the way, Danita. Okay. Here's, here's a win, I guess, although they were very drunk. So maybe they didn't know better and it was a little dark, but I had like a 22 year old dude ask for my number. So I think the comp. <laughs> they were dancing with me I was like they came to me I was just dancing by myself I went to see my friend's 80s band the, the basic cable they're called and um I had all these like 20 something guys like around me and they're all like fighting over like who's dancing with me and then the one like asked for my number I didn't give it to him obviously because my like maternal instincts were God was like <laughs> literally be my child you know um but I think that confidence, like that hadn't happened to me in a really long time. So I think it definitely, the program gives you that confidence where people are just drawn to it. You know, they were not appropriate for me whatsoever, <laughs> but, but, you know, but I, I, but the more, when you're sober, it's just funny because they seemed so drunk to me and out of control. Like they were just a mess. So that's, that's the other thing. So yeah. Yeah. You have a choice in that moment of a 22 year old hitting on you of, um, your mind can be like, Oh, it's just because he's drunk and he doesn't really <laughs> like me and I'm just a sex and an object. Or there's a part of you that can go, damn, I've been working out really hard. I can attract mm -hmm. him in the 20. Hey, I'm pretty, I got my, I got my shit. So, so our filter system can kind of create whatever route we want to take. And so I love that your filter was like, Hey, I still got it, but you were able to be in control and be like, but do I want that? You know? So yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I do not. Okay. This is a really good one. I wanted to go over. Um, and so, um, I have, at least in my journey, um, I got stuck a lot in the endurance type of training. And a lot of us women do because it's the first step. It's the first step to just moving our body, generally not using much weight, and something we feel comfortable. We all know how to run. We all know how to jump on a bike. We all know how to jump on a treadmill. So it's something we easily gravitate towards. Then our next thing of progression, we think, well, I just need to do more. I need to run faster. I need to be on there longer. And then we're just like, well, if I didn't sweat, then I didn't do enough. So we kind of are just staying in this like realm of progression with just the endurance training. Mm -hmm. My way of looking at it that I've been able to talk with, with my coach is he had me start dipping into the hypertrophy and the strength training. And what this did is it vastly changed my physique immediately. And so we talked about cellulite earlier. Endurance isn't going to help your cellulite. 
endurance is just going to be helping your heart and it's going to be helping your cardiovascular system. So if you want right. a marathon fast, perfect. Keep doing your endurance training, but you didn't come in here saying to I want to run a marathon fast. So yeah, no, I don't like cardio anyway. <laughs> so yeah. I hate running. I hate all. Well, then so, amen, because, amen, because then you're right on track where you need to be. So you started lifting a little bit heavier. Remember you, I was like, let's get some, a little bit more weight. Yeah. On. And the reason why is because I'm going to show you this. So hypertrophy, the muscle growth, that's totally that sculpting and toning that we're looking for. It's going to speed your metabolism because we're building that muscle, which you can clearly see week over week. And that is what's really going to get you that trimmed, sculpted, and really help reduce that cellulite. The muscle underneath is what's going to really create that smoother look on your legs. Mm -hmm. And then I also like to blend it with strength training. Um, so when I kind of start to uh, plateau a little bit in my hypertrophy, then I go into strength. And I use those two in the middle. And this is where I see most of the results. And a lot of women just are afraid of weights because they think I'm going to put them into powerlifting, which is the bottom one. Look at the repetitions yeah. on powerlifting. What is that? Yeah. One to two reps. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's if super I, heavy, I guess, super, if you know, I know your whole, your goal is to sculpt and tone your entire body. You're not yeah. looking to build anything. You're just like, I'm ready to right. sculpt, and sculpt and tone. Right. So if I ever had you do one to two reps, you'd be like, no, no, no girl. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> my route because you're going to be pulling like 500 pounds on a one to right. two repetition. So really the, now the goal is to stay continuing in the top three is great, but the endurance kind of weaning yourself out of a little bit more and continuing to keep challenging those muscles. My goal is I've, I've been starting to see those pink weights adding onto your barbell. I want to yeah. see the, the pinks, the teals and the purples combined. And once that's done, I don't know if you have the black weights, but I want to start seeing some black weights on your bar. Cause that's when you're really going to start to go, oh, my cellulite's reducing. I need the black weights, but I will have to get them. <laughs> okay. So if you don't have those, put those on your vision board and I would, I would get those going for sure. So I have really never stuck with anything for more than six months until I found Booty Bands Barbells. It's life-changing. The progress over perfection mindset has been so life-changing. You have self-love and to have self-worth. I just do the 10 minutes and I'm already reaping the benefits. The workouts are fun and that they're effective. I have seen great results that I never thought I'd ever see. I love it because I'm keeping the weight off. We help hold each other accountable as they commit to our goals. Booty bands and barbells has really changed my life for the better. I have to be real with you. The past six months really took a toll on me and my body. I felt incredibly stressed, isolated, after being a good 12 to 13 pounds heavier, said that's it, I'm gonna make healthy choices. And I'm happy to tell you today that I am actually down 15 pounds. I feel amazing. I feel like I lost fat and put on muscle. I have a lot more energy. So it's never too late to start. You can take control again. Thanks, Booty Band Nation. Positive that you will get more sculpted, more toned, and you're gonna love those new healthy changes and our community and our coaches. From where you're at, no matter where you are, or how long you've been in the position. So just click the button below to book the call with our team.